Hi everyone, I'm going to be showing you how to get some nice high resolution displacement from some open source online. This is for Mars and I'm putting this together in 3D Studio Max. This is the website where we're getting the data from. It's a high resolution imaging science experiment. If you go to the DTMs area, you'll see a lot of available maps. The maps are pretty big, like up to a gigabyte. And they've got a few different kinds of visual imaging here. I really wanted to share this workflow with you just cause this UA high rise site is sharing such awesome data. This is good for a diffuse map. That's what I downloaded to use for this diffuse. This is the map that I'm gonna be using. And that is the IMG image file that we're going to be editing. I'll take note that this is one meter per pixel. So that's a nice round number. So here I've got the file downloaded. This one was just 300 megabytes, it's actually a small one. Copying the name here and I've got a text file where I'm prepping some of the command line inputs. I'm changing my directory and getting into the right area and I'm using gdal. I'll leave some links for how you can install it onto yours. Mine's crashing actually every time I run something. but. I'm able to get the information out of it. So what I'm looking for here is the minimum maximum value. That's the lowest point and the highest point of that image file that we're dealing with. So I'm running these out here. So lowest point is like negative, is that 4099? Yeah, so that's, that's almost like four, four kilometers in the negative. And that's the highest point. So I'm rounding this off. And here I'm just changing that to 31. But I'll think about that and then I'll change it back to 30 because that's higher. And this is the highest point. And there's the resolution of that image. I'll find it up here. I've got the X and Y in pixels. So I'll write that out. I'll be using that later in Photoshop. The next line of code we're going to be putting into the command line actually exports out the height map that we require. So my minimum and maximum values will go in here. I'll copy my file name. That's going to be my input file. And that's followed by the file we're going to be exporting out using gdal. I'll use the same name and I'll suffix it with displacement. And that's going to output an image file into the folder. I'll paste that there, hit enter, and it's pretty quick. Nice crash. And you'll see in this folder it's output an HDR file and also my raw file that I'm going to be using. So drag that into Photoshop. And I need to grab the dimensions. Copy that and that's 7163 is my second dimension here. I'm going to change the image mode to be 16 bit. And I'm on a window, so I've got this PC. Hit OK. And now I can see a 16 bit displacement map. The highest parts are full white, and the lowest part is full black. And we're using all of the values in between in this image somewhere. I'm going to output this map. 16-bit TIFF, no compression, and now I'm ready to put this together in 3D Studio Max. Copy this path so I can access that displacement map soon. Jump into Max and I'm working in meters. Uh, I've got a little image plane creator script. 
that's the diffuse map I grabbed earlier and it's just used straight up the dimensions and put them in as the length and the width actually that works out perfectly because we're working with one meter per pixel and that's exactly what I've uh, scaling that's what I'm scaling things to by default so I'm going to subdivide this plane just to get a bit of a denser mesh so we can see the displacement that I'm going to put onto it uh, I'm rendering with mental ray for this and I'll do some renders with scanline as well so uh, my script when setting up the image plane is just putting it on as a straight standard map so I'm gonna change my material that I'm using to be a mental ray I can design material and copy the diffuse map from my image plane there is there paste it in my arc and design material and I just turned off the reflection there also I'm going to grab a bitmap this is going to be the displacement map paste in my path that I've got and it's that tiff there okay Now I can drag the displacement map straight into the mapping slot of my displace modifier. That's instanced now. And I'm going to grab the true amount of displacement. So what I'll do is copy my maximum amount and then subtract my minimum amount and then I'll have 170 meters. Actually that's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. So my height is 170 meters. And what I'm going to be using is luminance center. Things are looking pretty clumpy at the moment. What I'll do is get rid of any blur and get rid of any filtering that, I'm, that I've got on the displacement at the moment that's going to help sharpen up the displacement. Also, I'd consider turning off the, the tiling as well, you don't need that. Now I can add on a turbo smooth underneath the displace modifier and throw in some sub D's on that. Divide it a few times, you're going to get a pretty heavy mesh, but things are going to start looking quite nice. Loaded some lighting quickly, changing to just early morning just so I can get some angled light on there and see what I'm getting. Some of these pits and gullies in this crater is looking awesome. This is just using the daylight system. That's looking nice. I think I'm going to give that a render. Originally I pressed F9 and paused Camtasia. So I've got that sorted up now. Alright, this is real time and it's render. So it renders pretty quickly. This is low quality setting. Um, I'm going to show you it renders even quicker when we dial it back to scanline and get a quite a good result just using scanline and this diffuse map along with the displacement so I'm dialing this up to just be full HD scanline render I've got my standard material ready I'm deleting out any of the lighting I've got in here and getting rid of my mental ray sky that doesn't work with skylight and turning off my exposure control so now I've just got a basic scanline scene and even when I render that I press the right button it's just flying through it and this is pretty good base to use straight as it is just throw that into Photoshop and start to work with it see if I can frame up on this a little bit better I 
again I'll show you the now I turned up the subdivs here show you the render time here when we're getting even these subdivisions in a full HD render it's probably going to be like 10 seconds for one frame and it's looking pretty tight go ahead and turn it into a 4k 4k frame and then we're going to get like 4k renders in about 25 seconds you ain't getting no 4k renders in no 25 seconds I think this displacement map was a little bit smaller it's one of the smaller ones I find in the high-rise NASA site so that's just falling apart at 4k where I'm at sometimes I like to get right down to the ground that'll look quite nice but that was about 25 seconds for a 4k frame and you ain't ne you're never gonna get that sort of speed in mental ray at least probably not in v-ray I'll turn off the turbo smooth so we can play with the displacement a bit and just really crank it up for this get a bit of an idea how far we're pushing it here I'll show you the subdivisions again on this wireframe mode so we're cranking them right up I might even go another level than that if I'm getting close to stuff yeah this is it's probably taking the displacement too far but get a really good idea of what you're getting and just the viewport is pretty responsive as well so you can plan your shot and compose it you can see your lighting on it but the details are nice At this point, I think I was just trying to frame up, get a nice angle. I saw those, some kind of mountainy dunes in the distance. Frame up on that. Switch back into my mental ray. Daylight render. Change the time. Flip around the sun a little bit to get a bit of an angle of what I thought might look okay. This is. I think the width of this one is 960. Well, I'm going full HD on this one too. And that's a low quality mental ray render. What I'm going to do is just turn the quality up a little bit let the shadows get a bit softer um, jump into the light list uh, enable some of this aerial perspective so we'll get some haze there and also I'm going to turn the haze value off I think I'm using 0.3 it was a bit too much here when I rendered this so I think I saw maybe a 0.1 would have been more like it but getting some haze Things are dropping off.